Let's pray before we begin. Lord please let us understand your word and put it in our hearts. May it shape our lives to be more like your Son. In Jesus' name we ask, Amen. Psalm 62 Truly my soul waiteth upon God, from him cometh my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation, he is my defense, I shall not be greatly moved. How long will ye imagine mischief against a man? Ye shall be slain, all of you, as a bowing wall shall ye be, and as a tottering fence. They only consult to cast him down from his excellency, they delight in lies, they bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. Selah. My soul, wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation, he is my defense. I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, ye people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Selah. Surely men of low degree are vanity, and men of high degree are a lie. To be laid in the balance, they are altogether lighter than vanity. Trust not in oppression, and become not vain in robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. God hath spoken once, twice have I heard this, that power belongeth unto God. Also unto thee, O Lord, belongeth mercy, for thou renderest to every man according to his work. Matthew Henry Commentary on Psalms Chapter 62 verses 1 to 7. We are in the way both of duty and comfort, when our souls wait upon God, when we cheerfully give up ourselves, and all our affairs, to His will and wisdom, when we leave ourselves to all the ways of His providence, and patiently expect the event, with full satisfaction in His goodness. See the ground and reason of this dependence. By His grace He has supported me, and by His providence delivered me. He only can be my rock and my salvation, creatures are nothing without Him, therefore I will look above them to Him. Trusting in God, the heart is fixed. If God be for us, we need not fear what man can do against us. David having put his confidence in God, foresees the overthrow of his enemies. We have found it good to wait upon the Lord, and should charge our souls to have such constant dependence upon Him, as may make us always easy. If God will save my soul, I may well leave everything else to his disposal, knowing all shall turn to my salvation. And as David's faith in God advances to an unshaken steadfastness, so his joy in God improves into a holy triumph. Meditation and prayer are blessed means of strengthening faith and hope. Verses 8-12 Those who have found the comfort of the ways of God themselves, will invite others into those ways, we shall never have the less for others sharing with us. The good counsel given is to trust wholly in God. We must so trust in Him at all times, as not at any time to put that trust in ourselves, or in any creature, which is to be put in Him only. Trust in Him to guide us when in doubt, to protect us when in danger, to supply us when in want, to strengthen us for every good word and work. We must lay out wants and our wishes before Him, and then patiently submit our wills to His, this is pouring out our hearts. God is a refuge for all, even for as many as will take shelter in Him. The psalmist warns against trusting in men. The multitude, those of low degree, are changeable as the wind. The rich and noble seem to have much in their power, and lavish promises, but those that depend on them are disappointed. Weighed in the balance of Scripture, all that man can do to make us happy is lighter than vanity itself. It is hard to have riches, and not to trust in them if they increase, though by lawful and honest means, but we must take heed, lest we set our affections unduly upon them. A smiling world is the most likely to draw the heart from God, on whom alone it should be set. The consistent believer receives all from God as a trust, and he seeks to use it to his glory, as a steward who must render an account. God hath spoken as it were once for all, that power belongs to him alone. He can punish and destroy. Mercy also belongs to him, 
and his recompensing the imperfect services of those that believe in him. Blotting out their transgressions for the Redeemer's sake, is a proof of abundant mercy, and encourages us to trust in him. Let us trust in his mercy and grace, and abound in his work, expecting mercies from him alone. Thank you for listening. If you want to know more about Jesus and what the gospel means to you, then hit the video shown on the left of the screen and please don't forget to subscribe. May the Lord Jesus Christ bless your day.